tank, that amphibious vehicle. Why does that have little like portholes on the side that are perfect that you could throw a grenade? Like it's like a perfectly sized for a grenade. Like you just drop the grenade. Drive-by movies, you're watching. Fresh releases. My name is Blaze. And I'm James. And this week we're talking extraction. Are you always this brave? I'm not brave. You rescue people. Sometimes. Sometimes I do other things. Extraction is the new movie that Netflix brought us that everyone is talking about since Tiger King and whatever movie will come out after this. It is directed by Sam Hardgrave and stars Thor. That's his name. Thor. Yeah. Uh, he's not a Hemsworth brother whatsoever as the main. Oh, no way. No way. Uh, it's weird because this kind of feels like a Liam Hemsworth movie. Like it, <laughs> it definitely has. Like what was the movie that him and uh, Harrison Ford starred in? It was like it has that vibe. Like any of the movies that Liam Hemsworth and Thor and uh, sorry and Harrison Ford. It, it seems like yeah. it's, uh Like because Chris Hemsworth, you know, it, he's not not that he's like. I do like him. He but just this isn't the movie that I see him playing. I don't see him as an action star. I think he works as Thor because Thor is one of the more comedic characters of the Marvel movies. But I liked him in Rush. I do like him in uh, what's it called? Cabin in the Woods. Uh, this is just a weird movie to see him in. It just seemed like a Liam Hemsworth or Scott Eastwood kind of movie. Um, having mm -hmm. said that, though, this movie kind of reminded me of a story a long time ago, Blaze, that you're a part of. Uh, one of our favorite punk bands growing up was this band named Set Your Goals, and we saw their reunion show at Chain Reaction. And we're just people listening while we're waiting for the bands. And I just remember, uh, what's it called? Some people behind us talking about, dude, are you going to see Civil War? The Russo brothers are doing it, bro. It's going to be good. And we were just dying laughing like the Russo brothers, the directors of, you know, like two movies, you, me and Dupree. <laughs> the Winter Soldier, that's it. Just those two movies. <laughs> and uh, Have you seen you, me, and Dupree? <laughs> so, but now I guess I get it. <laughs> After you do, you were in? Extraction is so horrible, but I had such a blast <laughs> watching it, though. Granted, I was drunk. Like, if you watch it high, maybe it's just as entertaining. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I was like, oh, I can assure you it's not. It's not fun. Huh? <laughs> no, no, I'm teasing. No, it's still it's still fun. I, I think that movie like it, it knows what it is. I think it it has like a lot of the action scenes is like just let's just preface this. I think all the action scenes are filmed really cool. There is some questionable moments here and there, but I think all the action scenes are really well choreographed. Uh, especially there's some scenes where it's Chris Hemsworth fighting this other mercenary guy. And I thought those are the coolest scenes in the film, like where they, they kind of use a lot of fist to fist combat in those scenes. I felt like that was the best The a lot of the action and like gunfights, I, I think are a little uninspired for the most part, but when it's like close quarters and Chris Hemsworth is like kicking people in the nuts. I, yeah. I'm losing a little bit of respect for him, but then at the same time it was filmed well, I feel like. right. Yeah. It goes to show that stunt coordinators, like they're like a uh, John wick, the popularity of those movies, that guy's gone on to direct some amazing, uh, like he went on to direct uh, Deadpool two, and Atomic Blonde and uh, what's it called after starting out with John Wick and stuff and that's cool to see that like these stunt coordinators are given a chance like uh, I give the Russo brothers credit for doing that and I know one of the brothers wrote this movie and they both helped produce it but like it's cool to see stunt coordinators going on into directing it's working well for these action movies because I feel like action movies have been lacking in terms of stunt work and then camera work just like um like uh like paul greengrass i mean i like his movies but just his action scenes started like just like i remember they started the trend of just extreme close-ups to where you couldn't see anything going on 
And uh, I like that John Wick said, like, no, let's stretch out the camera a little bit. And some of the close qu- yeah. uh, counter scenes are cool. Like the scene that stands out the most is the it, it's shown as if it's done in one take. But like it reminded me of like the chase scene in uh, Children of Men where it's like taking place in the car. It's a car chase scene and then it goes into action scenes on the street. It's all done as if it's taken in one shot. And of course, there are some breaks that are noticeable if you're like paying attention. But mm-hmm. it, I, I thought it was cool and just a different take to where you don't see that too often in action movies. Definitely. Yeah, I feel like they really nailed, like you're saying, the choreography in this film is really cool. I think the cinematography is that next little special thing because I feel like they were moving a following, like whether it was on a steady cam or something like that. And it just made a lot of the action scenes a lot more epic than they probably would have been if this was filmed, you know, just less on the fly, more like a bigger budget, more visual effects. I feel like they there there is a lot of visual effects in this movie and they're not great, but I feel like it being, you know, that low budget kind of movie, they definitely took notes from films like The Raid, Redemption or Raid 2. You could tell they were easily inspired by those movies and it definitely shows. And I think that that's what makes the movie, you know, actually pretty entertaining. But when it comes to the story aspect, that's where, oh God, you just, the story is like, it's too much. It's been done. Like, I mean, you can just, you know, put your hand in a hat and grab an action movie. And most likely it's the same exact plot. Um, it, like, like we said, I mean, it works for what it's trying to do. It's definitely more, I felt like a resume starting film to where like, oh, I got Chris Hemsworth to be in a movie and like, oh, I got the Russo brothers name attached to it. And hopefully this guy gets more movies that will have like better story writing going into it. I know it's based off a graphic novel, but I wasn't too invested in the story. I was just you know, having a blast watching it. It's by no means going to be a movie I ever really watch again or really. Until the sequel comes out for you, right? I guess so. I mean, yeah, let's get into spoilers. I hate more than anything when movies start where it ends. That was one of my biggest problems with Atomic Blonde. I'm like, well, there's no stakes now. I know that she's going to survive at the end of the movie. And then here I was just like, all right, well, he's in pain, but most likely he's going to survive. But I was like, oh, sick. They actually killed him off. And I hated that it did end with like the possibility of him being alive, because like, how the hell is that possible? Dude, if anyone can survive getting shot in the neck where like some of your main arteries are, it's probably Chris. (laughs) a superhero among men so i i honestly i thought he died until i just talked to you and you're like there's a sequel and i'm like i thought it was just his ghost maybe like haunting that kid or something or like still watching over the kid i don't know but yeah just knowing that no he's actually alive because it's a sequel maybe they're gonna make a prequel maybe you mentioned that but I think that he's definitely alive. It's Chris Hemsworth. He cannot die. Yeah. For now, I mean, we know that like Netflix announced a sequel. I don't know where that direction is going. I like the idea of him dying just because, you know, it sounded like uh, he was struggling with like we don't get too much background on him and I don't need too much background. I'm glad there wasn't a huge scene of exposition or anything. I thought like he was going to go into why he became a crazy mercenary, what happened with his wife and like, but it's just it's subtle to where like you care enough for the kid that he's talking with and stuff. But like, Mm -hmm. I would have lost it if it went into crazy exposition and maybe a sequel will do that, or maybe it's a prequel, but I I thought it was just enough to where it wasn't trying too hard to get emotional, but it was just enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I think like, I didn't love this movie. I think it was just really, it's what you take out of it. If you're going to smash like 240s and watch this movie, probably going to have a good time. You're going to take out maybe a hangover from this movie. Maybe you'll throw up. I don't know. I feel like that's probably the the most ideal way to watch this movie. If you just want to have one of those awesome quarantine boys nights. (laughs) That's definitely what this movie was like made for. I felt like I wish like I was a shotgunning beers while watching because it's like it's uh, masculinity. Like grenades. Yeah. Every time someone throws a grenade, you shotgun a beer. Oh, love it. Turn this movie into a drinking game. That's your best bet to enjoy this thoroughly there's a lot yeah every time a magazine is reloaded every time someone dodges a bullet every time uh there's a what's it called someone gets uh like a when they get hit by a gun uh pistol whip there we go yeah mm-hmm. there's a- anytime someone's like shell shocked in a moment and they like you can't hear anything you just hear that like <laughs> <laughs> like you know like yeah 
at first I was a little confused too, just because like that guy kind of double crosses Chris Hemsworth. Uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, but I forgot like about like them not having any money and stuff. Like I was like, wait, how are they affording like all this stuff? But then I was just like, oh, okay, never mind. They're double crossing them and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit, one of the last things I kind of went on this on a little particular, but why was there an anti like anti aircraft type vehicle? Remember in the end that like tank, that amphibious vehicle? Why does that have little like portholes on the side that are perfect that you could throw a grenade? Like it's like a perfectly sized for a grenade. Like you just drop the grenade in there because he drops two in those windows. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know what those are for. I know, I've seen those kind of tanks in Call of Duty style games. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's meant for like people like to like to shoot from and stuff. And it would have made more sense oh, if like God. we saw someone shooting from the inside from those holes. But yeah, just seeing it out of context and just him throw that, I was like, wow, that is a huge defect. Because also, if it was like an amphibious vehicle, you wouldn't want huge holes in the side if like. You're going to take on water. I guess it could float maybe, but still like, yeah, it just it was the perfect size for a grenade. How about a little bit smaller? Like the barrel of a gun is smaller than a grenade. Like that, that was just I couldn't wrap my head around that. I was like, yeah, it made for a cool like scene. But like the, the designer of this amphibious vehicle is an idiot. <laughs> like he knew nothing about war almost. Yeah, if I was high and saw that for like the whole 10 minute action scene after it, I would have been thinking like, wait, why is there a hole there? <laughs> that would have been my thought process. Yeah. Maybe you're just in my head at this point. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, guys, that is going to I say go check it out. What do you say, James? Yeah, I mean, it's it's stupid. I It's not a good movie by any means, but I had fun watching it. Uh, I'd recommend if you're just bored during quarantine and that's all of us right now. That's the only reason why I watched it. And I feel like we're liking every movie we're watching currently just because we don't have much to choose from. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I definitely can agree with that. Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this week. If you have Netflix, go check out Extraction. If you want to support the show, leave a like on this video. After doing that, if you haven't already, please subscribe and check out some of our older videos and leave a comment and hit that notification bell to get all our latest updates. That's it for this week. Tune in next week for our brand new fresh releases.